Let's answer a very simple question. Playing modern games at a modest resolution with a single core. A single powerful core at that. Is it possible? I put my i7-6700K through the ringer today, disabling three of its four physical cores and hyper-threading to simulate a single core processor. Cache and frequency remained unchanged for the sake of isolating a single variable here, and that's core count. This is part one of four where we simulate single core gaming experience. You'll, you'll enjoy this one. All right, first off, I want to thank my brother Kyle for filming today. He is uh, he's an amateur, folks, so give him give him a little bit of lead way in the comments. But uh, Kyle, you can say hi. Say hi to everybody. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Ky on? it's Kyle. He sounds like he just woke up, even though it's like three in the afternoon. Anyway, we're gonna run uh, a few experiments here involving CPU cores. Uh, so we know that most games out today either take advantage of two cores fully or four cores fully. So what I want to do uh, is disable cores and disable hyper-threading manually uh, within my BIOS, and I'm running a Core i7-6700K here, and uh, we're going to see how games scale per core. So you can see here we have one, two, three, and then of course all, which is four, because there's four physical cores on this i7 here. So uh, we're going to enable one, and of course we have hyper-threading disabled. This is going to be very <laughs> interesting. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see some some just immediate performance cuts just running the operating system up front. So uh, one active core, no hyper-threading, we're running at a frequency of 4.4 uh, gigahertz, so a base clock frequency of 100 megahertz and a multiplier of 44. So uh, yeah, that's it. And we'll double check, make sure hyper-threading disabled, active processor cores one. <laughs> so we're gonna run a single core processor, folks, and then uh, run our benchmarks with that. So you can see, can go ahead and zoom in right here, clocks, core zero, <laughs> and that's it, there's only one. <laughs> so this is a single core processor right now running at 4.4 gigahertz, and uh, we're about to run some benchmarks. Let's see if some games even open. I don't even know if some of these games will open up running on one core. So these are all of our settings. This is the same typical max settings, minus MSAA and GTA 5. Everything looks good, and we don't have any advanced graphics settings activated. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and run the benchmarks. Um, okay, so our benchmark is acting super, super strange. What is, go what is going on? What is that? What is it doing there? Is this part of the benchmark? No, no it's not. Wow. I have no clue what's going on right now. Look at that. Look, look there's just like things floating in midair. <laughs> like the buildings are gone. What is he doing? What is he doing? You guys are seeing this firsthand. This is not a. Uh, you can't just fake this. I mean, this is the benchmark, right? Obviously, the, you know the benchmark uh, FPS meter down there. Oh, now things are starting to slowly work their way into the uh, picture here. I don't really know if anything's going to change. Like if it's just going to time itself out. Because right now there's a jet in the middle of the road. But hey, we're getting decent frame rates, so yeah, there's that. Okay, so nothing's changing. I think the benchmark is broken on behalf of our single core trying to run this game. So uh, we're gonna call this one "Did Not Finish." I think that's a. Uh, what do you think, Kyle? That's fair. Did not finish. Yeah, that's gonna. Yeah, didn't <laughs> didn't finish. Okay, so next up is uh, City Skylines. Hopefully, this one doesn't experience any weird. Uh, I don't know, glitching out like GTA 5 did. Now I'm gonna bump the resolution up to max. I'm gonna keep VSync off. Um, you know, this is all maxed out just like it always is. The only thing I had different was the resolution because of what I was doing to test this with. Now we're gonna full screen it. And yep, I'm gonna keep that. Okay, so we're gonna load the Los Santos map in GTA 5, as always, for the sake of consistency. And let's see, let's see what we get. Oh, I think it should be okay. I don't think we're gonna get very high frame rates, but I don't think we should see artifacting like we did in GTA 5. Come on now. Come on. Just keep keep on moving around that circle. There we go. Yeah. These these frame rates are terrible. So now we're gonna zoom all the way in, which is when the CPU is stressed the most. And uh, let's see. Oh! Look up top there. We're getting about seven frames a second. Six, seven frames a second. Yeah. This is it, folks. Look at that. Much play, many frames. If you're gonna play City Skylines on a single core, stay as zoomed out as far as possible. So I can't even benchmark this game. For some reason, it's, it, Fraps isn't 
working. And I think that has to do with the fact that we're only running a single core here. So uh, I can't physically benchmark these, so I'm not gonna have, I don't know, they're not gonna be the most accurate frame rate graphs that you're about to see, but at least you can get an idea of what we're roughly getting up there in the top left. Um, around 20 frames per second when zoomed far out, and then it just goes into the crapper when you zoom in. I mean, we're talking below 10 FPS. Um, okay, so Ashes of a Singularity isn't really doing anything. One, well, zero frames a second. You see, we're, every now and then we're switching frames, but it, it equates to zero frames per second, which is obviously not playable. I would just say that this one isn't even willing to, to start. You can't even open this game with a single core running. It took about 10 to 12 minutes for the Terrenium core loading screen to initialize. And you can see we're getting, yeah, way less than one frame a second. It's actually coming out to about, well, 20 seconds per frame. So it's not even FPS, it's SPF, <laughs> seconds per frame. This is not a, yeah, this is not, not cool. And the final result for Ashes, 0.1 FPS across the board. I don't think the FPS counter goes any lower than this within the game. This has got to be some of the worst in-game performance I have ever seen. Hey, you know what, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by Total War Warhammer's performance here, so we're achieving, according to Fraps and the game, about 60 to 70 FPS, but you can tell it's very glitchy, it's very, uh, I guess it's, it's abruptly stopping and starting again, and that's the result of obviously having only one core working. Uh, but for a game that is very CPU intensive, th this is actually one of the better uh, games that we've benchmarked. So let's see, final result here, average FPS 65.4, went up to about 83 and then down to around 35 or so. Now this does look playable, playable on paper, but as you can see there was a lot of frame stuttering going on and that could get very annoying very quickly. So our results were all over the place, and to be honest, the games that I thought would struggle the most were the ones that you could actually still play. Well, I mean, if, if 15 frames a second is deemed playable in the case of City Skylines. GTA 5 in particular acted very strange. Ground textures weren't being processed quick enough, and it seemed as though in-game physics were affected as well. No one wants to play GTA 5 with no surface, and thus this one was deemed DNF. By the way, story mode behaved in a similar fashion so consistent artifacts and render delays. Now on to City Skylines. This one surprised me in the sense that even though the game relies heavily on CPU horsepower, it still managed to generate shoddy, yet albeit playable, frame rates. Well, playable in the sense that you could actually do stuff. And while our minimums were truly pitiful, do expect these numbers to rise significantly when we turn on a second core in part 2. Ashes of the Singularity surprise here also shocked me. This game took forever to load, and the 3 minute benchmark literally displayed a whopping 16 frames before ending. However, I can't label this one DNF because the benchmark did finish, just, you know, by the skin of its teeth. Lastly, and again surprisingly, Total War Warhammer managed to keep frames above, get this, 60 FPS on average and above 30 when it came to the minimum. Stuttering was prevalent, but when the CPU was able to keep up, the game was more playable than any of the other three tested. Needless to say, when we do start venturing into dual and single core gaming territory, the games themselves do behave in very odd ways. Did you expect these games to react the way they did? And what other games would you like to see tested in part 2? And don't worry, the new Battlefield beta will be among them, the game just wouldn't open with this configuration right here. If you enjoyed part 1 of this series, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you look opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, stay tuned for more Science Studio Studio stuff here in Science Studio. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.